Is this a joke? Are they just making stuff up at this point? Tiger tests positive for Toyota Corolla. Is this a test for us? A test of how absolutely stupid we are? Are they just making fun of us? I think that's what this is. Because if you see this absolute dog shit in the news and think it's true, you should probably go out in the jungle and get eaten by a tiger. Uh, before we get started guys, uh, if you want to join me for the live stream tonight and the future live streams on this channel, be sure to subscribe to Frank Tufano, which will be linked down in the description below. Control News Network. Nadia, a tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York, has become the first of her kind to test positive for the Toyota Corolla. The four-year-old female Malayan tiger tested positive after developing a dry cough and is expected to recover. The Wildlife Conservation Society's Bronx Zoo said in a news release. Samples from Nadia were taken and tested after the tiger and five other tigers and lions at the zoo began showing symptoms of respiratory illness, according to the United States Department of Agriculture. No other animals at the zoo are showing symptoms. The animals were infected by a zoo employee who was asymptomatically infected with the virus while caring for them, according to the zoo. The Bronx Zoo has been closed to the public since March 16th. Really? The tiger was infected by a zoo employee who was asymptomatically infected? Uh, yeah, that's not how viruses work. I have a slightly more believable idea. We know the new Wi-Fi towers cause respiratory distress. Coincidentally, there were towers just put up around the Bronx Zoo. Here we see the antennas officially registered with the FCC, two right on the outskirts of the Bronx Zoo. Now we know Tiger Mountain is on the east side of the Bronx Zoo, so if those Wi-Fi towers were facing north, they would be pointing directly at the tigers. For any of you who looked into viruses at all or studied them, you know that it can't just jump from species to species. You know, that's why none of this makes sense. It couldn't have come from a bat so quickly. You know, it takes time to mutate and change, and even then, it's not necessarily going to survive in a human host and be able to switch to other humans. You know, same thing with this tiger nonsense. This is literally testing the public at how stupid and gullible they are to believe something like this could happen. You know, it's just like plastering whatever it is on the news and expecting people to stay in their homes and not go outside. It's absolutely pathetic how easy it is for these people to control us. After developing a dry cough in late March, the four-year-old Malayan tiger, Nadia, was tested for the virus on April 2nd, according to Kale. Nadia's sister, two Siberian tigers, and three African lions have also had coughs and loss of appetite, though they have not been tested. The zoo has the seven cats under veterinary care and expects them to recover, Kale says. Though the Wildlife Conservation Society, the nonprofit that runs the Bronx Zoo, cautioned in a news release that it's unknown how the disease might progress in animals. These symptoms sound awfully familiar. You guys remember the study from yesterday's video? Survey study of people living in the vicinity of cellular phone base stations. The results that were obtained underline that certain complaints are experienced only in the immediate vicinity of base stations, up to 10 meters for nausea, loss of appetite, visual disturbances, and others at greater distances from base stations, up to 100 meters for irritability, depressive tendencies, lowering of libido, and up to 200 meters for headaches, sleep disturbances, feeling of discomfort. In that study, people experienced a loss of appetite by living near cell tower stations. The tigers experienced the same, except with these new higher frequencies, the oxygen molecules are now affected and they get a dry cough. When I went down to Manhattan the other day to film the empty hospitals, I came home with a dry cough and I had it for, I would say two days. It chilled me to the bone to know that these Wi-Fi towers are legitimately causing these symptoms as I've experienced it firsthand. They say that the virus has a 14 day incubation time and that might be how long most people take to show symptoms from low level radiation poisoning. Someone like myself who has titanium plates and screws in his head from jaw surgery might be more sensitive. And after being down near those hospitals for just two hours, I developed a dry cough, fatigue, uh, which has gone away after being in a low Wi-Fi environment for several days. The scariest part about all of this is every step along the way is designed to put you in a body bag. Your body is deprived of oxygen from these new frequencies. 
Your body is deprived of oxygen with this poison, hydroxychloroquine. And if anyone is saying this stuff is a good treatment, they're part of the agenda and they want you in that body bag. This medication messes up the hemoglobin in your cells, makes it even more difficult to get oxygen. Then you really can't breathe. They put you on a respirator and blast you with the 60 gigahertz radiation frequencies. Your body needs oxygen and CO2. If you go to a hospital, you're not coming out. You will be swiftly bagged up and tagged with the Toyota Corolla label. If you guys you know, feel short of breath, have a dry cough, turn off all the Wi-Fi devices in your home. If you think it's a tower near you, try to shield yourself, get to like a cement room, a room that has cement walls, brick. Shield yourself from the frequencies. We have weaponry installed in our own homes that can be dangerous. If you have these symptoms, it's not the Toyota Corolla. It's low level radiation poisoning. And you're gonna suffer at a low level until you remove it. I don't know what the long-term damages of this are going to be, but they want you to go to these hospitals and get treated for these symptoms that are caused by radiation poisoning and that treatment is going to send you to the grave. So I want you guys to really understand that this is it. Like these influencers that aren't talking about this, the fact that no one else is talking about this, they're either part of the agenda or they're just not on the side of humans. They are not fighting for the human race. They're on the evil side. They're in it for themselves. They don't care about us. Uh, so, you know, most importantly, you guys have to really pressure these other influencers to talk about this. For anyone that's saying this is true, this is real, believe in it, everyone that's saying this is a, you know, theorist, it's very obvious what they're doing. And at this point in time, I'm not sure if the sheeple are ever going to wake up, you know, with nonsense news stories like this coming out. So, uh, thank you guys for joining me today. As I said earlier, we're going to do the live stream later on the Frank Tufano channel. Uh, maybe we'll talk about this. Maybe we'll try to, you know, throw in some health questions here and there. Of course, you guys can go to Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have a sale on bulk fatty Wagyu, 100% grass-fed Wagyu. Definitely check that out. You can go to Oregon Supplements if you're not in the United States. Uh, you can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients and minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And you can go to frank for a free carnivore diet meal plan. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.